Hey, this is an update video uh, to a video I did last year, uh, my yard, my backyard. Um, let's start, I'll start over here, pan over here. Um, that right there is my sea hibiscus. Um, grows like crazy. The growth and you can cut it back all the time, but it'll never flower if you keep cutting it back. But um, produces a beautiful flower, variegated leaves, incredible, unbelievable. Um, <clears throat> there's a banana right there. I have a trellis back here that I was starting to grow uh, some vines, some grape vines in between these uh, plumerias. Try to get them to go up over. Uh, my plumerias, but that one down there seems to, mm, it's not doing really well, it's um, not doing really well, so, got some ginger right there, uh, there's a, there's a grapevine, um, I have several of them, I think I have about five varieties, five different vines, uh, that's actually going to reach the top pretty soon, once it reaches the top, then I'll uh, then I'll cut it and wait for the uh, branches to come out of the sides. And then I'll train them up. Well, here we have another plumeria. And papaya tree. Last year I lost uh, the main trunk down there. Since that time, I mean, it's grown. It's already grown six feet, nine months. Incredible. Incredible. Some caladiums right there. Start those underneath. Another plumeria. Crown of thorns behind it. Um, down this way, back that way. I have all my hibiscus cuttings. A few different colors. Another plumeria. And there's a grapevine right there. Let's show you what I'm talking about. Uh, now that that top of that vine's reached the top wire. What we do is we come over here, cut that off, and then down here, the new shoots will come out, and you train those up the wire. Those will be next year's fruiting branches, depending on how far they make it. Um, here we have another plumeria. I told you, got like plumeria apocalypse. Um, banana tree. This is a good variety. Uh, a guy gave it to me last year. Um, I've watched his grow and I mean they grow. It's incredible the, the growth rate on this, this variety. And they stay small. They only grow six feet. So it's perfect. Um, there's another plumeria. Back there I have uh, blackberries. Thornless blackberries. Trying to grow those up the wire. Next year I plan on cutting these plumerias all the way back. Like probably a foot off the ground. Get them a little bit lower. Another plumeria right there. That's my sugar cane in the back. Harvested it all this year. Um, back there is dragon fruit. I got it growing up the wall. It's growing pretty good. Down over here I have more plumerias. Another vine back there. And this is what I'm this is what I'm talking about. The branching. See those uh, branches that have come out of the sides, those are gonna be trained up in the wire. 
Um, behind me I had my mango trees. This one I just cut it back because this one just fruited. So it's already got new growth coming. Amazing. Just about a week and a half ago I cut it back. And there's another one. The last one was a rosy gold. This one's Malika. And then lemon zest. Here we have another plumeria. Behind it's a vine, grapevine. Uh, I actually dug that one out of my father-in-law's house. He no longer wanted it. Dug it out. Uh, there's another grapevine back there. Uh, it wasn't doing so well. It didn't get a good start. Um, not really sure what the problem is. Another plumeria. And some banana trees in between some uh, dwarf Cavendish. A little blueberry bush down here. And then behind me is a Cogs Hall. Variety mango. That stays relatively small. Keep it around eight feet. There's a Meyer lemon. No lemons on it this year. I think it it reacted to me uh, cutting it too much last year. Um, the plumeria right there. Right in front of me here is, uh, remember that sea hibiscus in the beginning of the video? That's a sea hibiscus uh, that I've tried to train into a bonsai. Mm. Uh, take away the big leaves. Let's see. I don't know what that is back there. I forgot the name of it. And then all these back here. These are just my uh, plumeria cuttings and the cuttings that I worked with that are just in pots looking for homes. Um, here's an avocado. That's a bacon. That's a graph from last year. I did that one last year. And over here... This is a Oro Negro. And this here is a, a transplant. This is a papaya tree that I had on the side of my house that I removed. Stuck it in the middle and it's actually doing good. And the top, I had uh, rooted the top portion of that tree and potted it and this is what was left. A month and a half later it grew those little shoots and now it's starting to regrow. Right here we have my Valencia Pride. This is a year of ground, a year in the ground. It's doing really well. It's doubled its size. And down here is a graft that I did last year of a Lancetia. Um, it's still alive and still okay, but I don't think it, the rootstock, I don't think the seedling that I, that I used was uh, good for our soil. So it's kind of taking its time. Over here I have a lychee. I pruned it back. Um read something about uh, how to cycle your lychee tree to flower during the cold. So I had to do that. I had to cut it back. That was hard to do. All these plumerias, sea hibiscus, sugar cane, more sugar cane. Uh, pan back this way. Then I have moringa. It's a moringa right there. It's beautiful. And then uh, another sea hibiscus. That was a branch I just took off the tree over there and stuck it in that pot and it's grown. And a lemon tree over there. And this right here is a chaya uh, native to um, 
the Yucatan. Um, leaves are edible, but you have to cook them. Um, and that's all. I hope you enjoyed.